Larry's red sneakers stood in a puddle of blood. From his perspective, there was a considerable distance between himself and the pile of dead zombies he had just produced. He had found a gold watch and had taken it. He was slowly getting to the police station. On his way, Larry several times had to remind himself that he no longer had the keys to the station. That he was merely a civilian now. Actually, he was trying to break into the place and steal all the guns. Knowing that he was wearing a stolen golden watch, he truly felt like a burglar. He couldn't help but to feel a bit excited. He found his way in through one of the windows. He washed the blood from his face, took a sip of water, and then checked all the rooms of the building. He was hoping to find a person in particular, perhaps zombified, a person whose position then would be vulnerably replaceable. The humiliation that Larry had felt after finally being fired was still unsufferable. For one stupid mistake, he grumped. He simply found himself unable to surpass this defeat, unless he could do something about it. Make a difference. Take a stand. It was like David against Goliath, a little person against a giant. As Larry was getting riled up about all the injustices he had suffered, there she was, Sergeant Lena Preston. Sergeant Lena Preston was no more. While on administrative desk duty, she had been his boss. She had handed Larry the letter that said that he finally was formally fired. But now, Larry was the boss. In Larry's mind, he had come out of the situation a hero. Something along the lines of a celebrated civil rights activist for all the silent, unjustly treated cops out there. The incident at the neighboring Spiffo's restaurant, that was a nothing burger. A fight had broke out, so what? Besides, those fries had been purposefully extra salted by that. Larry calmed himself down. He had won. He gently folded his shirt, revealing an old t-shirt that said POLICE in bold letters. With an extra air of dignity, Larry walked towards the gas station. He pictured himself casually walking up to the counter, buying a pack of cigarettes and a lighter, telling the cashier to keep the change. It was something he had dreamt of doing for years. There were no cashier in sight. And there was nothing stopping the eventual string of unfortunate events that would occur. But initially, Larry did have quite a lot of things go his way. Before leaving the gas station, he was carrying a lighter, two packs of matches, and had grabbed all the cigarettes he could find. Finally, he was having a cigarette. It was his first cigarette in years, and never, ever had he so badly wanted to have one. Oh. Larry relaxed his shoulders. After some more looking around, he had even managed to find the keys to the storage room. Larry was like a kid on Christmas Day. And bullet ammo straps, and shotgun shells, and 9 millimeters, and... He couldn't contain himself. He had to walk away and look again. Is that... Yes, it was that. 
Is that... my gun? He had once slammed the gun on a countertop. He now sharply recognized the small dent it had left on the gun. With his own gun in his holster, he picked up the others and started to compare them. There was a laser attachment already installed. He removed an iron sight from one of the other guns and installed it on his own. He couldn't wait to test it out. Larry wanted an effective weapon, and apart from his handgun, he was also carrying a sawed-off shotgun on his back. He couldn't believe his luck when he noticed the keys to the taxi, right under its front door. Once inside, he checked the glove compartment and found a map of West Point, a slightly bigger town not too far away from Riverside. He grabbed a pencil and an eraser from his school bag and carefully used the palm of his hand to hold the map in its place while scribbling two notes on it. Gun store leads to Louisville. He made sure to put an exclamation mark on the bridge that led to his wife. The car had no gas. The thought hadn't even occurred to Larry. But, pleasing to Larry, its trunk contained an empty gas can. After reloading his spare magazines and racking his weapons, Larry was getting ready to leave for Louisville. While he casually tried to start the engine, Larry listened to the NNR evening news broadcast. There had been a demonstration in D.C. Objects were hurled at the police and the crowd forced back. The mentioning of protesters throwing objects at the police only added fuel to the fire. Of course, the damn car would have no fuel. Larry had just got his courage up to leave Riverside, and now this! It was getting late. Larry was both hungry and getting a bit drowsy. Well, he only needed a little fuel, he supposed. The zombie scared him shitless. Uh, granted, there were no stain in his pants. But if Larry even really knew what scared shitless was, this was it. Thankfully, Larry had had the foresight to leave the ammo in the car. However, all his tailoring books, almost every little personal effect were in his backpack. It was getting a bit heavy. The thought of dropping the gas can almost full to the brim, did occur to him. But he just didn't have it in him to drop it. At least not yet. He decided to soldier on, like a true champ. The slow chase continued, and Larry managed to get enough distance from the crowd of zombies. He thought it possible to fill the car up. Alas, no. He finally dropped the can on the ground. He even threw his school bag while he was at it. He was getting awfully close to the zombies now. He was panicking. Not knowing what to do, Larry did what he knew best and fired his shotgun. The sound of the shotgun blast echoed. The sound traveled past the local spiffles, across the parking lot, before reaching the two ears of a zombie. A zombie whose stupid looking face was slowly turning straight towards Larry's location. As it turns out, the zombie was far from alone.
Larry had been too stressed to even realize that his shotgun had no shell in its chamber. He racked it and let off another two blasts. A third, a late bloomer. It dawned upon Larry that the sound of the shotgun seemed to attract way more zombies than its shells was able to kill him. He had to come up with a better plan. End of chapter 3